All right, Sketch Pad Podcast, we back. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to the page. So today we're talking about the Fannie Willis case. That, uh, well, that's is actually uh, the uh, case against them. Uh, Nathan Wade and Fannie Willis. And uh, yeah, we're going to react to another one of these videos. So we'll be back. Sketch Pad, you know what I mean. Yeah, man, Sketchpad, we back, man. Listen, you want to donate to Sketchpad? Right there, man. Cash app. You know what I mean? PayPal. All that good stuff. Everything's in the description. If you want to donate, it's on the screen. Listen, um, we hope we earn your subscription today. We're going to watch this video from Doug and XL. Uh, he's talking about the case, the updated case, and they had uh, Nathan Wade on the stand. And um, some interesting things happen. So let's watch this, and then we're going to come back and discuss. Let's go, Sketch Pat. You know what it is. Nathan Wade gives the most baffling testimony of doublespeak I've ever heard. And we're going to share it with you on why I think we all hate lawyers. I think we well, have I very much want to be here, so I'm not a hostile witness. I very much want to be Not here. so much that you're hostile, Miss Willis. It'd be an adverse witness. Your interests are opposed to Miss Merchants but why also Nathan Wade is probably going to jail. Welcome to Doug in Exile. I'm Doug Tenaple. This is where the happy patriots are. As we watch the foes of Trump hoist themselves on their own petard. The traps they set for him, they end up falling in. And that's too bad. Uh, it's not too bad, actually. It's kind of funny. Here's some legal analyst on the Megyn Kelly show to help unpack it for you. I think it was spot on. Fanny's toast. Fanny's toast. And Nathan Wade is sitting there with flames going on around him going, uh, this is fine. Here's Trump on Truth Social. MSNBC just stated game over for Fanny. Fake Fanny Willis case in Georgia. Another scam coordinated with the Biden White House for purposes of election interference. What does he mean by even MSNBC is coming out on his side? Yes, even MSNBC. It's it's so legalistic centric and yet so important and fascinating. Right. Don't let the legalese fool you. This is epic. This is monumental. If things are going in the direction we think uh, Fonnie Willis lied to the court, it's game over for her. She will be disqualified um, if they had a relationship prior to when they uh, represented to, to the court. It's it's a huge deal. I, I can't overstate it. But let's get some more legal uh, analysts in on this one. It does matter when the relationship began. If it began before Nathan Wade was hired, that's a problem. And then it's also a problem if they lied. And if they lied, both of them have submitted uh, information under oath, then there's no question. I would agree with you. They would be pulled off the case. That's the best thing that could happen for Fannie Willis is that she merely get pulled off the case. What's the worst thing that can happen? Prison. That not only will Fannie get disqualified and Nathan Wade get disqualified by this Fulton County judge, I actually think the case has to be dismissed and then a new prosecutor can decide whether uh, he or she wants to refile this case because this case has been uh, unethically tainted, illegally tainted since before its inception. And remember, Fannie Willis was the last chance for anyone to even pick up this case. No one else wanted it. It was so bad. Only Fannie Willis was corrupt and politicized enough even to take it. So if they pull her from the case, what idiot is going to step up and take on this giant fraudulent politicized mess they're going to go like i don't want to end my career she could have had this relationship going back to 2020 and if that's the case both fanny and nathan wade are going to face perjury allegations and maybe even prison time they should go to prison if they lied because they made misrepresentations to the court in response to mike roman's uh, motion to dismiss. So based on their lie, all kinds of case history has already been piled on top of it. And so when you find out that it's a lie, you have to pull all of it out from under it. And that's why they don't like people on the stand under oath 
lying in court. You had both Nathan Wade file an affidavit, a sworn affidavit, and then Fannie Willis uh, relied on that affidavit in her court filing in, in opposition to Mike Roman's motion to dismiss. So if, if they lied about that, they should they should be disqualified. They should be disbarred. They should be charged with perjury. They should be put in prison. And let me just they should be put in prison. Now let's watch this one together. This is going to be Nathan Wade on the stand, just so you can hear how duplicitous and weird his lies are. Imagine trying to pin this guy down. Let's watch this together. It goes on to say, including you, including but not uh, limited to dining and or drinking at any restaurants, bars, pubs, hotels, or persons' homes from the date of marriage to the present. You understand what the word present means? I do. And present means the filing on May the 30th, 2023. Isn't that right? It is. So as of May the, tw the 30th, 2023, you have done a lot, or you had done a lot of entertaining of Miss Willis, had you not? I had done some, yes. And in fact, under your testimony, um, you would have said that she had also entertained you. Isn't that correct? Yes. And so your answer to this interrogatory is false, is it not, sir? No, it's not false. Uh, well, hate to dance around the. You, know, you, you, you the answer is yes. You did entertain Miss Willis, correct? Right? Yes. She's not. She's not uh, your spouse at that time or at any time, correct? That's correct. She's not related to you by blood or marriage, correct? That's correct. But she entertained her, right? Yes. And during the course from your marriage. The period of time up to the press. So the answer would have been, yes, I did entertain. Dang it. Dang it. Entertain somebody. He's trying to say that he wasn't married to her because they had split up. He wasn't lying, but he's just, he's getting caught both ways to Sunday. Nathan Wade is going down completely embarrassed himself. Free from this financial conflict of interest that Fannie Willis is making money off of this prosecution of President Trump and 18 co-defendants based upon a bogus novel RICO conspiracy theory against political opponents, a new prosecutor is going to have to come in and have independent judgment whether they're going to bring uh, re, uh, re recharge President Trump and these 18 co-defendants. And no other prosecutor is crazy enough to bring those RICO charges against him. That was uniquely a unique flaw of Fannie Willis. Thank you. Merchants entrance are, per, are contra contrary to democracy, Your Honor, not to mine. All right. He can order that it be withdrawn from the DA's office and shifted mm -hmm. elsewhere. If that happens, Ainsley, I think new prosecutors will look at this and they'll say, wait a minute, this evidence doesn't constitute racketeering. And they may decide this whole case is legally unsound, which I think it is. And they may also say, what's going on here? Wade travels to Washington for two eight-hour meetings at the White House. Was this prosecution of Donald mm -hmm. Trump coordinated with and driven by his election opponent, Joe Biden? Okay, and we're going to end here on, this is about Nathan Wade's lawyer, who before he was hired by Nathan Wade, Nathan Wade had told him he was in a relationship with Fannie Willis. Bradley obtained information about the relationship between them directly from Wade when Wade was not seeking legal advice from Bradley. He obtained this information in a personal capacity as Wade's friend prior to Wade's decision to file for divorce. While Bradley would later represent Wade for a time in the divorce proceeding, the information about the relationship was obtained prior to the attorney-client relationship. So this lawyer that Nathan Wade hired, this friend that Nathan Wade hired, Nathan Wade had told him that he had a relationship with Fannie Willis before he hired him. So that's before he's covered by attorney-client privilege. So that friend, lawyer, had to cough up the information mm -hmm. and rat out Nathan Wade. The truth caught up to him. Nathan Wade's going down. That means Fannie Willis is going down. And so the, the only question now is, will they find some desperate hack chump to take their place and pursue this case after Trump? I highly doubt it. What do you guys think? <laughs> Subscribe. I'm Doug in exile. That's crazy. Man, look, man. Damn. So 
there was another video which I didn't play, but I'm just gonna, you know, we're just gonna talk about it. I'm not gonna do another video on it. But basically, her best friend of a couple of years, I think they went to college together, Fanny Willis. They asked her, was Fanny Willis in a relationship with Nathan Wade in 2019? She said yes. And they said, how you know? They said they was affectionate. They was hugging, kissing, like a couple. Mm. So, I know people in the comments. Now, I read your comments. I hope y'all see this video. I read your comments. <clears throat> and I can, I will respond sometimes to people's comments. But a lot of times, if I already know your position and how biased you are, I read your comment and I see that you are just bias i'm not gonna respond because i don't like to have conversations with people who are one-sided i like to talk to people who are open-minded about the situation one of the persons in the comments said he was uh trump's trump's uh broke the law right that's what he said trump broke the law trump hasn't been found guilty of anything now one thing besides the Eugene Carroll thing and the other thing with the uh, the uh, the thing in New York with the um, overpricing the property or whatever. But as far as this goes, he hasn't been found guilty of it. So you can't say he broke the law. You can say that you believe it or you speculate it, but he didn't do anything yet. So you can't do that. Just like I can't sit here and say that Fannie Willis is not going to be the prosecutor until it actually happens. They have to take her off the case first. And then I'll say, yeah, she's off the case. But for me, my, in my opinion, from what I'm looking at and from what people were saying and from what the witnesses are saying, she's dirty. She's dirty and she's been dirty. Her own people were saying she's dirty. How can you defend that? Somebody that's closer to her is saying the woman is dirty. How can you defend that person in the comments? <laughs> How can you defend that? The person that's closest to her is saying she dirty. His own lawyer who he told that he was in a relationship with Fannie Willis, Nathan Wade told his lawyer before he was his lawyer. And he was in a relationship with this woman. So should I believe you person in the comments who don't know anything and not close to it? Or should I believe the lawyer who is friends with Nathan Wade and he had to ask him and he had to tell the truth? Who should I believe? So what it is, what it is, man. But you got anything to say? Man, um, just like I said before, man, uh, this this whole this whole situation is crazy, man. Um, she definitely she definitely's done. Simple as that. She's done. She's done. She's finished. She's finished, man. They're gonna cook her. She's uh, she's out of there. You know, that's all I really got to say. It's like so much, it's so much going on with that situation. Like, you know what I mean? Um, I don't even know how to uh, comprehend the whole thing because it's just, it's a lot. And I probably, and I believe that there's probably even more that's going to come out eventually, even more. And it's going to be more people to get removed too. Watch. I believe that. And I, you don't got to watch the video for that to know because it's written the writings on the wall yeah hey man look man i'm just want to say this last thing before we get out of here don't let people decide who you want to vote for vote for whoever you want to vote for if you want to vote for biden or if you want to vote for trump whoever you vote for i respect you because that's what you want to do. 
But mm-hmm. don't let people decide who you should vote for. Mm-hmm. Because people will tell you who they believe you should vote for, even if you don't like that person. Mm-hmm. So even if you don't like Joe Biden, they will persuade you to vote for Joe Biden because that's what they want. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And also, everybody on the the, the liberals and the, the Democratic side, you have to respect that people want to vote for, for Trump. You can't try to persuade people not to vote for Trump because that's what they want to do. You always talking about fairness in elections and democracy on the ballot and all this stuff. But yet and still, you try to use scare tactics to get people not to vote for Trump. If 85 million people want to vote for Trump, you can't be mad at it because that's why we have elections. If people didn't want to vote for him, they wouldn't vote for him. That's it. If the election is fair, whether it's Biden or Trump, if Joe Biden wins, he won. If Trump wins, Trump won. But you can't get mad at people now and then still in the same breath tell me that we have an open and fair election, but then tell me that people shouldn't be voting for Trump. Don't tell people who they should vote for. Whatever they go in the booth, that's who they should vote for if that's who they want to vote for. And if Trump ends up getting 90 million people voting for him, you have to say, this is America and this is who they wanted as the president. That's why we have open and fair elections, correct? So if that's why we have it, you can't get mad if everybody want to vote for him. He's making a better argument. When they used to stand on the soapbox back in the day, when presidents, you oh, oh vote for me. I'm going to lower your taxes. Oh, vote for me. I'm going to make sure that you get free health care. And whoever had the best compelling argument, that's who you voted for. So yeah. guess what? Trump might have the best compelling argument this time around. And everybody wants to vote for him. So you got yeah. to respect it. If he wins the election, he's your president. Because the people have spoken. You know, you remember y'all say that? The people yeah. have spoken. So if the people have spoken and everybody's saying they want to vote for Trump, then who are you to try to stop it? Charlemagne? Who are you to try to stop it? Bill Maher? <laughs> who are you trying to stop it? Why? <laughs> That's what the people want. So what you're going to tell me? The people are stupid? Oh, the people are dumb. They don't know what they want. Okay. Well, then they don't want Biden either. Yeah. Respect it, man. But yeah, we out of here, man. Sketchpad, you know what it is. Yeah, be all bye-bye.